Hello and welcome to our worship as the six. It's lovely that you're able to join us in this time of worship whenever you're doing so and wherever you happen to be in the world because I know there are, are some that do look in on this from further afield. It's lovely that you're able to be a part of us wherever you are. We're of course in that time of the year as we look towards spring. The days are lengthening and we're hoping more and more that the weather will warm up as well and yet there are those signs of life. Just thinking of a picture of snowdrops that I saw in one of our churchyards during the course of this week. At the moment we're thinking about a question, the question that the disciples asked Jesus when they saw him returning from his time alone in prayer. Teach us how to pray. How can we pray? So we're continuing in that thought and that theme today. And we've been doing so, unpacking that thought about prayer through an acronym based upon the simple word pray, P-R-A-Y. And today we're thinking about R, all about rejoice. And so as we come to our worship, let's be still, let's pause and open our hearts, our minds, our lives to be ready to meet with the living God who longs to be with us, who longs for us to know how much we matter, how much he loves us. Come Lord Jesus, fill us afresh with your spirit so that we may lift our hearts in praise, in worship, that we may rejoice in who you are. The who you are that does remain unchanged no matter what is going on in life around us and in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us and you are love, you are grace and you are mercy. And so now we come and we long to lift our hearts, our voices in worship of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let's just do that. Let's now lift our voices to worship the Lord our God. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbour as yourself. Those words remind us of our call to follow the Lord's way and what the Lord's way looks like. The trouble is we know so often we don't go that way, we go our own way. Yet always the Lord is gracious and merciful. When we confess that we have gone our own way and we look to him for his strength to live his way rather than our own. So now let us take a few moments to pause again, to reflect and to bring before the Lord those things where we know we need his forgiveness in our lives. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we continue in a few moments of prayer. Lord of the hosts of heaven, our salvation and strength, without you we are lost. Guard us from all that harms or hurts and raise us when we fall through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we hear from God's word. Jesus at the home of Simon the Pharisee. The Pharisee invited Jesus to have dinner with him. And Jesus went to his house and sat down to eat. In that town was a woman who lived a sinful life. She heard that Jesus was eating in the Pharisee's house, so she brought an alabaster jar full of perfume and stood behind Jesus by his feet, crying and wetting his feet with her tears. Then she dried his feet with her hair, kissed them and poured the perfume on them. When the Pharisee saw this, he said to himself, If this man really were a prophet, he would know who this woman is who is touching him. He would know what kind of sinful life she lives. And so let us pray. Lord Jesus, speak to us now by your Spirit and help us, teach us how to pray so that we may be a part of who you are and what you are doing in this world at this time. In your name we pray. Amen. And so that is the theme that we are thinking about at the moment, this question. Teach us how to pray. The question that was posed by the disciples as they saw Jesus returning one day from his time of prayer. They knew it was important because they saw that it was important to him but they realised that they had much that they wanted to and needed to learn. And the answer to them came through a model, a prayer, or what we now call the Lord's Prayer. Now, for ourselves, perhaps we also know that prayer is important, but maybe we find it difficult. Maybe we find it difficult to know how to make time, let alone how to. And of course, if we're not sure to, if we're not confident, then maybe we realise that we don't, even though we wish and desire to in some ways. And yet prayer is part of who we are as human beings that no matter what in life, there's something deep within us. In particular circumstances, maybe most of us, when there's moments of pressure that come, we find that we cannot help but pray. We're looking to or to something or, or someone bigger than ourselves in those moments. And perhaps the biggest and greatest prayer of all, of course, is very simple. Help! Now, in thinking about this theme at the moment, we're, we're using and drawing upon a book which is called simply How to Pray by this guy called Pete Gregg. And you might find that helpful to get a copy of, to read through, to support you in thinking about how to pray. Jesus prayed, 
when he wasn't in crisis. He prayed because he wanted to. He needed to spend time simply with his father. And he invites us to do exactly the same in prayer. And so, as I say, over these few weeks, we are looking at this particular pattern uh, that draws out from an acronym, which is as simple as four letters, P, R, A, Y, pause, rejoice, ask and yield. And it's intended to be a simple, doable practice that we can, that we can do daily in some way, at some point in time in the day. And my encouragement is to enable you to think that, yes, I can do that. It's not something for the experts, whoever they are. Just because I'm wearing a collar doesn't mean that I haven't got a lot to learn in prayer. Gosh, I still know that I've got so much to learn in prayer. But this is about encouraging us all to realise a pattern that will enable us to pray So last week we were thinking about the first of those letters, pause, which is, I guess, intentionally thinking about a time and a place that will work best for us, depending on the people we are and our days and the type of temperaments that maybe we have. But to find that moment where we can pause to meet with the Lord, where we can hear and realise those words in some way that that come from a psalm, be still and know that I am God. Doing so because we know that it matters to who we are, to our well-being at its deepest level in many respects. And so today we turn to the next letter, R, for rejoice. If you think about that word, I'm sure it's not one that we readily use. It's maybe something that we don't readily express in our lives, except perhaps at concerts or a match, whatever sport that may be. Mind you, that's if it's going well, which, of course, it doesn't always in a sport. If we focus on circumstances, though, we may find this a particularly hard thing to do. We might even say that it's not possible or reasonable to do. And yet in the Bible, we hear several times how we are exalted or exhorted to do just that, to rejoice. Here's a couple of examples from Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And in another of the readings for today from 1 Thessalonians 5. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the Lord's will for you. It's worth remembering that those words written by Paul from Philippians were written from prison. He was not having a straightforward, easy time in life at all. And you think about many of the spirituals that have come from the United States. They, of course, were written by slaves in the midst of slavery, but they expressed that sense of hope uh, and in the faithfulness of God for them in the midst of all that they were experiencing. So rejoice is not a word that is there expressing, well, everything's going well in life. No, because circumstances can change quite rapidly, can't they? Surprisingly so, shockingly so, perhaps, if we think about people's lives and situations. No, rejoice puts the focus on who the Lord our God is in the midst of those and also realising who we are in his sight too, in the midst of those moments. Let us remember again that Jesus is God with us, full stop. Now in that Luke 7 gospel story, 
We see how this woman's response is so lavish. She kneels at Jesus' feet. Uh, she pours out her tears and then she wipes them away with her hair. And she anoints and pours perfume on his feet as well. And she knows these things. She knows she is a forgiven, redeemed sinner who has been given a new start, that her past is no longer being held against her. She knows now that she is truly a beloved daughter of God. For she knows that Jesus has shown her what God is truly like. God who is holy, yet holy love. Holy, yet holy love. And so as we pause to come before the Lord, maybe there's this important question for us to think about, which is how do we perceive and understand the Lord our God? How do we experience him? How have we experienced him? Because that too will shape how we respond to this word rejoice and how we pray. That word rejoice points us to the opening words of the Lord's Prayer where it says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your or thy name, according to which version you prefer. I often find myself preferring to use that word thy in that moment because it expresses an intimacy in that relationship, something that we may be lost in our English language, but that is retained in a language like French. But Jesus's disciples would have been shocked by that implied intimacy Yet he's elsewhere, Jesus goes even further when he uses the word Abba, that short word, which is not a, the name of a band in this instance, but that word that expresses Abba, sorry, Abba, which means daddy. And yet at the same time, that second line, hallowed, reminds us of the due, deep reverence that is God's worth and, and uh, are calling to express, recognising that he is the king of all, the one who sustains all things. And yet, as the psalmist of Psalm 8 says, what are we that you would be mindful of us as mere human beings? This God who is love says to us, we are special, important and precious. And so as we come to pray, rejoice calls us, challenges us to turn away from ourselves and maybe how we view ourselves and at times how maybe we beat ourselves up. To lay our concerns, our concerns down, to let go of our strivings and to accept how we are seen in God's sight. And to let the Lord be the Lord too. For in so doing, we can then find that we are worthy and loved, not for anything we can do or have ever done or tried to do, but simply because of all that he is, has done, is doing, because of who he is. So what do we do in practice to rejoice? Well, it's interesting that the woman, she expresses that worship, that sacrifice through actions, through use of her body rather than words. Whereas elsewhere in the Bible, David, the shepherd boy who becomes king, chooses words as for example, in this really eloquent prayer that comes from the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 29. Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty 
and the splendour for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. So how do we do so? What practices may we follow to enable us to do the same? Well, there is the, the Bible itself. And of course, there are different passages, just like the one I've read out. A good place is the Psalms, those songs, those poems, which express so much of the gritty reality of life at the same time as acknowledging the greatness and the splendour of the Lord, as we've just heard David expressing. They help us to find a language where we can be real whilst acknowledging the reality of who God is in such a way that we can, as the Psalms often do, end up rejoicing, praising and worshipping. There's music as well. There's all different kinds of music, uh, that, according to taste and maybe according to different moments as well, that we can draw upon, that has that way of just lifting our spirits, lifting our heads in such a way that we find that we just can't help somehow but rejoice. There's the reality of creation as well, isn't there? Sometimes on a beautiful day when the sun is shining, the light is bursting forth, the birds are singing, the colours are out and you're outside and there's something in you that just knows you cannot help but give praise and thanks for the beauty all around. And maybe it's just finding our own words. They can be very short and simple, as simple as saying, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Thank you for who you are. I praise and worship you for who you are. Finding that way with our, with our own language to do so. And of course, there's also all those prayers and songs as well that have been written down the centuries where people have crafted language to enable us to, to lift our voices. And, and maybe there's moments when we can't always find the words that we want to, to say, that resources like, like that help us to be able to, to make our own. It's about finding what works best for us as people, given who we are, given the realities of the life, lives that we lead. But the most important thing of all is still to intentionally find a way to allow ourselves to rejoice, to have started out by pausing, but allowing ourselves those moments to acknowledge who the Lord is, who we are before him, to rejoice. When and where are you making that time and space to pray? I encourage you to think carefully and seriously about that. To think about what will work best for you, given your life. What maybe will you do this week, if you haven't thought about that before, to find that place, to find that time, to pause, and then to find that way that will help you to rejoice, to offer your praise and your worship, even before we do anything else. For that gives us the basis for what we will be thinking about next, is what we bring before the Lord to ask him about. So I leave those thoughts with you for the coming week. But actually right now, before we finish this time, I'd like to just put a little bit, some of this into practice. So wherever you are, let's just be still for a moment. Find a comfortable place to be, to sit. You might like to lay your hands on your lap open and to breathe, to breathe in slowly and deeply.
to breathe out slowly. To do so knowing that as you breathe in, you breathe in the peace of God and in the breathing out, breathe out those worries and concerns that you, that each of us may carry. And then holding that space for a few moments quietly. In your own words, picture the Lord before you. See his gaze of love upon you. His smile as he looks upon you. Hear those words as he says my precious beloved child. And you might like to respond like this. Here I am, Lord. And to turn your heart to praise and worship it may be simple terms just like this, Lord, you are so worthy, you're so wonderful, so precious. Thank you for your great love for me. Thank you that you see me as your beloved child. I encourage you maybe just to try something as simple as that in these coming days. A few moments each day that feels doable. And I pray that in so doing, you may experience and encounter the love and grace of God in such a way that will make a difference to who and how you are and live. And so now let us continue in our worship.
Let us pray. We pray today to give thanks for the wonders of our faith and for the times when Jesus called us to follow him. For that special time when we first believed in that call and for the assurance that belief has brought up to our lives. As followers of Jesus, let us play our part in spreading that calling to those who live in the darkness. On that foundation, we pray today for our church, the world, and for those we love, and for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in our church. We thank you for Julian, Amanda, Simeon and Nick, and all who preach, and for all those who pray. We support them in their calling and the immense responsibility of leadership. We pray for each of us who make up the body of Christ, sharing their skills and their gifts for the benefit of all, making our church a worthy place, a place where we can all come to worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and a special prayer for Her Majesty the Queen on her Platinum Jubilee. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ exchanged the glory of the heavenly throne for the form of a servant, we thank you that you have given Elizabeth, our Queen, a heart to serve her people and have kept her devoted in this service beyond all who were before her. Encourage us by her example to serve one another and to seek the common good until you call us all to reign with Christ in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our world is a troubled and dangerous place. The threat of global war seems all pervading. Serious environmental issues and, and pandemic feel unresolvable. Social media seeks to dominate our thinking Protect us from the rivalry, vanity and pride of world leaders and the ego of self-proclaimed influencers. May your peace enter their thinking. We pray for all those who are hungry today, especially those in Afghanistan, Syria and Yemen, places ravaged by war. May the leaders of the world come together to help feed these desperate people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our friends and loved ones. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind or spirit, and for the uplifting of those in hospital or residential care. Pour your blessings on all those who care for the vulnerable. We pray for those who face a life-changing decision, for those who will make sacrifices for the sake of their families, for families where love is breaking down and for the children of broken homes. We pray for those in debt and in housing need and the turmoil that brings. We give thanks for the wisdom that can be found from grandparents and for those who can only look on and worry about their family. Hear their prayers, Lord. Keep safe all family members who may find themselves in dangerous places and pray for all who are lonely and separated. We pray for the, for the pain of bereavement. May your Holy Spirit bring healing to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. Lord, we give thanks that you are there when things get tough, when life seems difficult to understand. Remind us to stand still and listen for your whispered words of comfort, for those guiding words we always need to hear. You are always with us. We are never alone. So please fill us with your spirit to strengthen us so that we can walk together. Prevent us forging ahead without you and please guide our lives in all that we do. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So now let us affirm our faith in the living Lord revealed by Jesus. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we go out into the week, may we find moments to pause. And in those moments, may we also find time to rejoice in who the Lord is and who we are in his sight and to be ready to pray as we can. Before I give the blessing, and as we think about going out into the week, uh, meeting different people, being in different places, I just want to offer this prayer, originally written by St Teresa of Avila, that reminds us about the difference that we can make for the Lord wherever we go. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks with compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands Yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, you are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. And so wherever we are, may we be people who bless, who bring the Lord's blessing of life. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you 
and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you all, all those you know, love, care for, pray for this day and evermore. Amen. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a good week, everybody. May you know God's presence with you. Bless you. See you again soon. Bye for now.